So let's begin with Finance Minister Ken Furiata, who says the e-levy is not a terrible tax and has rallied Ghanaians to back the tax measure. The levy is being strongly opposed by the NDC in Parliament, with a section of Ghanaians calling for its total withdrawal ahead of the consideration of the bill by Parliament next week. Finance Minister Ken Furiata has been meeting stakeholders and the public to get their buy-in. Thursday, he held two meetings, first with a minority in Parliament, which meeting ended inconclusively, and then later with a section of Ghanaians in Koforidia, where he has been urging Ghanaians to support the levy to raise revenue for local development. So we then brought to Parliament a 1.75% uh, levy, as the Minister has mentioned, this is not the most egregious tax that you could get, but it really leads to the issue of inclusion of all of us to build our society and wherever we really want to go to transform this land. And that has been the subject of this debate. The question is, do we want to move to this new Jerusalem? Do we want to move to this new El Dorado? so that we can, as a people, show that with our own resources, and there's plenty of it, as we see various buildings um, coming up uh, in this country. And even as you look at 1D1F, I think we started the 181 or so uh, 1D1F around. Uh, nobody thought it was possible. Um, of 306 are complete around the districts and 81 odd and more are happening. You can also see what happened to planting for food um, that has resulted, in a sense, in actually being able to export um, some food at certain points uh, in time. So that really is a reason. Can we sustain our debt and pay for it ourselves so we don't go out borrowing so much? Uh, can we have the resources to support employment, which is key and affects all of us, and really is very dispiriting and breaks down the dignity of our people. That is not the people that we are. And then can we support our infrastructure um, to be able um, to then um, increase productivity, move around the country, and create that modern society that we talked about. The finance minister has also been warning a gloomy economic picture should this tax measure fail to go through. He says the recent downgrade of Ghana by Fitch should be a warning. I think people forget what happened when we were in the IMF program. Uh, we couldn't pay for nurses and teachers. We couldn't hire any more because there were restrictions on that. I mean, it's just really thinking you can go back to Egypt uh, in a way in which we have forgotten um, how difficult and pernicious um, that master from Washington was. So we can deal with them for them to give us advice, but we need not ever get into IMF program. And if we don't do this e-levy, you are just pushing yourself in a way uh, that would um, potentially end up in such a disaster. And it's, it's um, I mean, there was a warning of that. Because last week, last week was a very difficult week for the country. Last week we got downgraded by Fitch, you know, ostensibly because they did not believe we could raise the revenues that we had um, uh, forecasted uh, because we were fighting about e levy. But what does that mean when you get downgraded and the spreads widen uh, for your bonds? Essentially, what we are saying is that if you go back to the market, you may pay about 500 basis points more, uh, which means that if I borrowed a billion, I pay $50 million more each year. The bonds are usually 10 years, and so 50 times 10, that's $500 million a year. All because we were arguing and not being able to make up our mind on resources that we needed. So we need to moderate that because the consequences are quick. Uh, but I'm sure last week there were other things that also were difficult for us as a country. Um, the Bogosu incident was not good for anybody. And then, of all places, Comoros could beat us in soccer.
Now that, <laughs> that should not ever, ever happen again. I hope the, the coach has been taking our idea. Communications Minister S. Lohuse Kufu, who also spoke at the town hall meeting, asked Ghanaians to disregard the NDC's opposition to the e-levy. She says the NDC has always stood against policies that will develop the country. We're confident that the e-levy will not bring about any negative changes in consumer behavior as electronic transactions afford us the convenience, the safety, the security that we currently enjoy. Despite the NDC's opposition to the communication service tax, they never repealed it when they were in power. They didn't even reduce the rate of the levy. They also complained about and rejected the National Health Insurance Scheme when it was introduced in Parliament and actually worked out. They complained about the capitation grant and sought to rubbish it. They had issues with free SHS and even asked for a, a boycott of the national ID and ridiculed our oil discovery as well, claiming that it was a drink and not crude oil. They always oppose every initiative that will ultimately benefit the Ghanaian people. But our collective experience shows, and they themselves admit, that despite their initial opposition to many of these interventions, they've proven to be worth their weight in gold. I dare say, and I appeal to them, to cooperate with government and work with us to pass this levy as well because ultimately the results that we got from the communication service tax which clearly did not destroy the industry will also be evident post implementation of this levy as we are all working collectively to enhance access to and use of digital platforms working with the ministry of finance to ensure that digital financial services becomes the norm rather than the exception as we strive to create a cash light society and reduce our reliance on cash for our transactions. Communications Minister H. Ghanian says support the tax measure because businesses are moving online and government should not be denied such revenue. We spent 234 million on travel mobility and accommodation. This was even down by 34% due to COVID restrictions on travel. We spent over 144 million on fashion and beauty on electronic trans uh, platforms. This is in Ghana here. All these transactions happened electronically and went largely untaxed. Business has moved from physical locations online, outside the reach of the uh, GRA and depriving government of much needed revenue. We need to reverse that and the e-levy will do that. It will enable government to build a proper digital infrastructure and create a digital marketplace which will connect buyers and sellers and help people access value-added services such as e-health, e-agric, e-education, etc. It will provide funding for cyber security to protect us from cyber fraudsters and criminals as we engage more on digital platforms. We all want connectivity and a robust digital infrastructure will drive down the cost of using telecommunication services and improve access to digital services. We're rolling out the rural telephony project. It will also give all of us a chance to contribute to our own development and, 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 and our economy, our economic and infrastructural development. It will reduce corruption, theft, and other forms of embezzlement because it is inherently traceable and people can't hide and commit fraud or crimes behind it. If you use a credit or a debit card, you pay between 2 to 4% transaction fees. And so the levy is on the lower end of total cost. All bank transfers also attract bank charges. So it is not true that this is going to affect or be double taxation 
or, or, or tax our capital as well. But I leave that for the finance minister. Now I'll join us as learning members of the Fix the Country movement were denied access to the town hall meeting Thursday. Um, joining me on the line is uh, Baka Voma, who is convener for that group. On what grounds were your members refused entry into the venue for the event? Um, we, we are still racking our brains on that one. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's really difficult to understand why an event which is seemingly open to the public and to the majority of Ghanaians, where, you know, young people are also, for the first time, waking up and looking to participate in our democracy, uh, showing up at this event, speaking up, spending all the night researching questions. We had 50 questions we had prepared, uh, wanting to be able to thoroughly engage the process where we're, we're denied in this manner. In fact, we found that there were security officials who had been stationed in front of the venue who were purposely there trying to identify face the country uh, persons who were coming to the event and prevent them from entering, entering and, and, and sharing and being part of the conversation. But it confirms for us one of our biggest fears from the beginning. Because we have been in Takrady, we have been speaking to market folks, we have been speaking to people on the ground, and we realized that so many of our fellow citizens had no idea about the events happening. And that's why we took it upon ourselves to have 25 people representing you know, the voices of everyday Ghanaians in the room to ensure that we break the, the seeming echo chamber that, that was in place and to make sure that there's not only yes, say yes, who had been you know, handpicked to be in the room and endorsing it. In fact, if you look at the event, uh, the vast majority of the people who were there were supportive of the tax, which is ref not reflective of the public opinion. Uh, Joy, Joy, I know multimedia has... Con has conducted surveys where 80, more than 80% of people were in, in abs ob absolutely objected to the tax. This confirms the same survey that we did as well. So again, it's, it's really baffling as to why we would be prevented from, from participating in the conversation. But you have uh, stated your position on the controversial e-levy already. Has anything changed having listened to the presentations by the sector minister? I mean, I think it is clear that they were coming into this event without any sense of wanting to have anything change. You know, they are actively trying to pass the bill in Parliament. They, they are doing this after the event, after the fact. There's no commitment and no indication that the purpose of this thing is to revert course or, in fact, integrate uh, popular opinion into the process. It's, it's, to, it's to sing a song to, to you know, to, to, to hardcore members of, of, you know, persons who support the government and present that as, as evidence that there are people who are in support of this. So that's what the purpose is. So we are not expecting that at all. In fact, what we want to be able to break is that we want to show up even when they make it seem like it's a useless endeavor and show you that there are a lot more people who do not agree with this. That's what we were in, in, in engaged in, in, in this process. But I give you an example. Of the 25 people that we had, you know, sent there to represent us, 24 of them were denied entry or dragged out of the place. It was only one person who was not identified. And that person went on to, to try to ask a question. And the person was cut off. He was the only person who expressed an opposition to the bill. He was cut off midway. And person seized the mic from, from him. So clearly this is, a, this is a, a sham which we all know is a sham. And I think that we should all be all honest enough in, in speaking to this. Now, the but, communications minister has explained that uh, the tax from 8% of the population in the formal sector is the fund being used for developmental projects. Tell me, is that fair to workers in the formal sector? I think, first of all, I, I, I object to, to what is a deliberate misinformation. Every citizen of this country pays tax. And I don't want to be able to, for us to treat certain segments of our society as being freeloaders. Everybody pays VAT. Everybody who is assessing goods and services in this country is paying a percentage of taxes. Now, if we are unable to be able to tax segments of our society, especially persons who are owning high-rate uh, high apartments in the city, which are not even being stayed in, which have become avenues for money laundering, and we are refusing to engage the property tax system because a lot of the political class hide their money in those places, then that's not a burden that we should only put exclusively on public sector workers or, or persons in the private sector way we have over overtaxed uh, in this in this conversation but as far as we are concerned the conversation is not only about how much you're seeking to raise in revenue but it also has to be about showing us how much you are you are collecting from the revenue which has been wasted from from corruption and also from you know from the auditor general's report where we see that there's no committed attempts to surcharge individuals involved in this and even while we are being called upon to tighten our belts 
There's no indication that the political class is doing anything like that. In fact, S. Gratia payments went up. All payments to Article 71 holders went up. They even smuggled in their spouses when the law does not require this. We are still talking about the president going on and, and renting high, luxurious private jets. Like, this is the moral decay we are talking about. And to see us then being denied the avenue to express ourselves within the forum that is seemingly open to Ghanaians, it's also, you know, diminishes our democracy in a particular way. Uh, Mr. Vorma, so your group is concerned about government expenditure, right? Now, the finance minister yes. today assured that government will be prudent. Are you not convinced? You know, uh, I think coming events cast their shadow long way, way, way ahead of time. Have you seen any indication that there was a, there's a commitment to cutting government expenditure? In fact, when the e-levy was being introduced, there was a smuggling of about 450 or 420 million that was being earmarked for a private company to collect those taxes. There's no indication that they are looking to cut down costs. So that's the thing. Like, you cannot come into this forum where you're trying to take more money from us and convince us that, no, now we are going to be accountable. You should have been accountable years ago. And you should have set out in your budget ways in which you are trying to reduce revenue in critical areas. None of that has happened. But one of the things we are bothered about is that, listen, 15 years ago when we discovered oil in this country, we made and promised that this was going to lift us all out of poverty. In fact, we are poorer now than we were at the time. We are more indebted now than we were at the time when the oil was discovered. We are more polluted now. Our fishermen go and get less fish from the seas because of oil operations. So we become worse off, even when we have found new ways to gain revenue. Why? Because you cannot be corrupt. You cannot, you know, try to tax your way out of corruption when you're not dealing with the root problems. Mm. It's like so, trying to dig yourself out of the hole. It doesn't work. It, it does seem that, I mean, all your concerns or all the uh, issues you're raising will not w stop the e-levy from passing. What's your next move? I mean, as far as we are concerned, we went to Parliament and we, we, we picketed at the front of Parliament. And knowing that this is a Parliament that has been closed off to any other person but the two political parties in this country. And we've tried to make our voices heard. We've mobilized public opinion. We are participating in every town hall event. No matter how much you try to throw us out, we'll be there participating in those forums. And if that fails, we'll put it in place and invite Ghanaian citizens onto the street. We'll go to the court system and challenge it as much as we can. That's what the business of, of holding a democracy to account looks like. And even when they have deployed the police to do these things, like for instance, now after what's happened, we went to the Corfordia police station and we lodged a formal police complaint. We are going to go ahead and file a pet and send a petition to the IGP as well. This is what the democracy looks like. And we are showing citizens to wake up and enjoy the process of holding government to account. I'm grateful for your time. Bakavoma is convener for the Fix a Country uh, campaign.